Hello everyone and uh, uh, welcome back if you have seen my movies before, the films and welcome for the first time if this is the first time you are looking at one of my fly tying videos today I am going to tie a fly that I think it's just a white and magenta magenta underwing and the white top wing and with uh, ostrich rubber legs it's tied like sea trout samurai this is really big because I think my first trip uh, will be really cold uh, in the water so I'm giving my hopes up on uh, magenta and white and silver so let's tie one this is a custom fly but I I believe I have high beliefs in it so I hope it works this weekend so here I have put together uh, medium evil magenta with uh, extra small evil magenta which I will tie together so always and here we tie tight wraps pretty much pressure to get it to stick together nicely without glue and then we go back to here and I will do a little if I can find it a little Michael Ferdin Michael Ferdini thing in the back because this fly I want it to be seen and I want it to be quite flashy so I wind on the Mirage tinsel in the back here it's going back a bit like this and I leave a five millimeters or something for the hook eye That's one of the good things with the Ferdin flies tubes that you can put your hook. It's uh, uh, pretty durable and movable, not so hard, so you can put the hook directly into your fly, which I like very much. And the ribbing, we will use sealized silver. Tie it in on my side. And for the back body, I will use uh, Evil Magenta. As I said, this fly, I really want the fish to see. And now I just start to wind the body on. Start by covering up the thread and where you tied in the Mirage tinsel. So we cover up everything nice and clean and here I go quite far up because uh, it's it gets a lot of more durability when I fold this over and tie it in like that maybe it's not necessary but I do it and here I have mixed uh, Evil Magenta regular dubbing with Evil Magenta glitz dubbing. So I get the long flashy strands from the Evil Magenta and <coughs> have something in my mouth. Some dubbing strands. So it's get a, get a, it gets a little more flashy around the body like this. And we're going to tie this like a sea trout samurai, so I'm going to stop the dubbing here. And here I don't build as much as I would have done if this was the front of the fly. But we will have wings and rubber legs and then more dubbing. And after that we will have two... hackles so I will tie the first wing pretty high and I want this to be 
tied like this, a bit forward, and then fold it back, and then tie it in. So it will never slip. Now just a little bit of brushing with a dubbing brush. Get these strands out. Like that. And now it's time for the first wing, which is Evil Magenta. Which I really like. And the sea trout where I fish likes it too. So just pulling in the middle to taper this a little bit, like that. And then I want to tie this in wide. I have to go back with the thread. Pinch it like this between my thumb and my index finger so it gets the V I want. Hold it with your left hand, press it down with your thumb, loose turn, and pull down. One, two, three, four, five. And yeah, that's a good width of that wing. And then we take away the waist, trim away the excess. We don't have to be so thorough here because this is the Sea Trout Samurai version where we use lots of uh, dubbing in front before we put on the rubber legs and the hackles. And here I will use quite a big bunch of flash because this is, I want to be really flashy. Try to tie it on wide, so one turn, fold it back, and one, two turns, and then we look. Not satisfied, you can just pull it in the direction you want them. This is quite good. A few on the sides, doesn't matter. Cut them off in different length, like that. And on top of this, we will have a big white wing here, which I will take away the fluff from, like that. And I will try to taper this one as well. It's a little bit tapered. So just pull in the middle, fewer and fewer strands, and if you have some long ones on the sides, you just take them away to get the taper you want, and I want this to be a little bit longer of course than the, the pink or magenta wing. So loose turn on top, pull down, one, two, three, four, five. And now we check on this side it looks good, on the other side I need to pull it down so it covers the same amount of that looks better. I wanted it to be longer like here or something, so I should have tied on the the first wing a little shorter, so let's see if we can do the thing that I talked about the last time, that I had too short hair. But this piece maybe will fix my problem. Take a small piece of white, and this is longer, take away some of this, we don't want that and then I just put this as long as I can in the middle like 
this. One, two, three, four, five. It didn't help that much, but you see the strands are going here now, all the way to here. I don't think the fish will mind that this fly will swim better if the taper is better. Here too, trim away the waste and don't have to be so thorough. And on top of this I will use uh, silver, sealized silver angel hair to get it more flashy. Tie it in wide, one turn, fold it over, and one, two, and then have a look. Spread it a little with your fingers if you're not satisfied, but I'm satisfied with this. And I will cut these off so they are a little bit shorter than the longest soft hair that we tied on. So these two were too long. Like that. And now we will put some glue. I'm going to put a lot of glue here because we want it to sink down in, in the hair that we've tied on. So it doesn't come loose like that. That's pretty good. And now I will tie on a big bunch of dubbing, which will be brushed out soon when it's on. Start close to the wing. And then move a little bit forward, and then we try to make a pretty good lump dubbing in front here. This fly is for ice cold water, and I really hope it will give me some nice memories. On the river. I'll go back a little bit if I can. Like that. So just hold back in a few turns in the front. Now we have a big lump of dubbing in the front which we will brush out. And here I try to brush it so it mixes with a dubbing that I tied in before because I think that looks better and then a little bit, of, a bit more on this side Like this. I think it turns out quite okay. It looks good from underneath. And it's a little more here. Like that. I love this uh, dubbing brush from Fredeen Flies because they are. You can dub with a tip, so if it's just a small area where I need to dub, I, just, I can do like this until I'm satisfied with the amount I have gotten out. And now it's time for some rubber legs. I'm just going to brush this through first to look if it's 
Yeah, it looks quite good. Yeah, I like it. And uh, some rubber legs to create some extra motion. Here I had some dubbing. Um, I wanted to have ah, this one get to get gets to get these rubber legs, and these are pink and blue barred. And I only need two. And then I tie in two on my one on my side, like this. Loose turns, so we can adjust it. One, two, three loose turns, just leave it there. And then we do the ex exact same thing on the other side. turns. Now we can put them exactly where we want them and I want these two to be somewhere here uh, just down the wing and uh, two of them underneath. So I first I take these two underneath and then I take these on the top and then I still use very loose turns And then I can adjust them again. Up and up. A little bit up with that one. Now they look good. I take my hair clamp. Just put them back. And then I put some glue on the thread to secure them. So they will sit perfectly exactly where I want them to be and I still don't use tight wraps now because the glue will secure them for me um, like that and I always take this away directly to see yeah, does it good? Because if they don't, you have to be fast to adjust them before the glue dries. And this time I thought that we would use uh, an ostrich feather to wind on as the first hackle. And I think that... Uh, let's see here. Ah, oh, this is this is gonna be better. And then I strip one side because it's I'm gonna have a, a gray hackle in front of this, but you don't have to be shy with hackles on the sea trout samurais because they're meant to be bulky and fat and wide. Just tie it in the tip like I, where I cut it, and then I take my hackle plier and pinch it. And now I have to do it the other way that I'm used to, but that doesn't matter because that that side had the finest uh, looking. Uh, ostrich strands, in my opinion. So it feels a little bit awkward, but since I don't need to pull back any of the strands, it's quite easy, even if you have to do it the other way than you're used to. I think I'll make two more turns. One. That's good. 
and then I take away the strands that I don't need. Well, I don't need that uh, the excess makes it a lot easier for me to tie in the, the tip or the that hold back the strands and the rubber legs one two three four five yeah, I think it looks quite good and I'm gonna have a look if it's an even spread around the fly I'm gonna do I do it with my little comb even if this doesn't need to be untangled. It's just something that I'm used to do. And it looks quite good. We created a lot of motion in the water. And now only thing that's left is a natural gray hackle and uh, metallic magenta cone head. I'm just gonna wet this a little bit. It's easier to keep it out of the way then. I'll just use a really soft gray feather here. And this is uh, a grizzly colored. And I try to tie it in in the tip and just cover this tiny tiny bit that we have sh shown with a thread. So I will tie tie this over the little thread that is seen. It could be a little bit tricky with all the rubber legs and everything, but it usually works pretty good. Like this, and then now I want a little bit of the fluff, of course, because that swims really well when you put on a turbo cone. And I want these flies to swim as much as possible, like that. Take away a little of the excess here, so don't get too much on one side. Once again, hold back the hackle, two, three, four, Five like that, and then I comb it to see that it gets untangled and has an even spread, and I'm happy with how it turned out. The only thing that I could be a little, little, little happier about in this fly is that I wanted to come a little bit further with a with a white top wing. I should have made the magenta wing a little bit shorter, but I think this was will swim quite good anyways and the front will definitely move around in the water and the the rubble with the rubber legs as well. So maybe we can trick trick something beautiful. And now I will choose between the Biggest, I think I take the micro, extra small, small. So this is the small uh, metallic magenta. This is the biggest of the turbo combs. And it's in tungsten and it's tight, so I'm just turning it. So it slides down. And then I wipe my fingers to get back with a 
Ah. With a hackle. So it's not in the way. I don't want the glue to be sucked up in the hackle or in the wings. So I just want the glue on the on top of the thread that we already have tied in. So I just want all the glue to end up here. So don't go towards the back or don't go towards the front. Like that. And as I use the large, uh, small, I use a little extra drop there to secure the, the small turbo cone. And now I want something that I can't find the Niklas Bauer's pipe tube so I can I have to do it like this now I'm twisting it on twisting it on pushing a little it looks good in my opinion Got a thread, and uh, where can it be? Tide slides yesterday. <laughs> Whatever. And take it out of the vise. And then I blow in the back, and this is really wide, and I'm very happy with the, with the mix of magenta and white. You can see. I think it looks good and then these beautiful hackles which will make this fly swim really well and on the bigger turbo cone heads I save at least three millimeters before I burn it down because then the head sits better it gets a bigger color with a through the flies my extra small tubing so it helps to hold the cone head in place some glue and we make good color there so now I'm going to cut off the rubber legs, because I don't want them this long. The ones on top gets to be a little bit longer than the ones underneath. I don't want to cut off any strands from the ostrich. See if I can succeed with that, like that. Looks good, and then we turn it around. And these two gets to be a little bit shorter because the two underneath will vi vibrate a lot more than the two on the top because two on the top will uh, swim alongside the wing. But uh, now I have cut them in the right length, I think. And this is a custom tube fly for really cold waters where the fish are not so eager to feed because it's so cold but I hope that this fly will change their mind because they can't resist it they wonder what the hell is that beautiful magenta white flashy vibrating pulsating thing <laughs> so the fly is done it's pretty easy to tie and it's uh, rather wide and fat and I think it will move a lot in the water to attract the fish so that's what I'm hoping for and 
I have tied a few more of these. Here are three, three big ones with uh, white rubber legs and uh, ostrich on these. These three and this one I tied a little smaller and then I use uh, soft hackle instead. So I really hope that this one will save my weekend. So thank you guys for watching and if you want to subscribe it would make me very happy and I will see you the next fly. Bye bye!